Hi, I'm Mark, the Electronic Engineer, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about a Tetris clock and how I made it talk. But first, let me introduce a fellow maker who loves to talk to unicorns. Everyone, meet Brian. Hello, everybody. What do you think? The Electronic Engineer is amazing. Actually, Brian does a bit more than talking to unicorns. He creates great stuff and one of the things he created was a Tetris clock and he made the library available for anyone who wants to use it. Way to go Brian, I love open source. The Tetris clock uses a library that was written by Brian. He did an amazing job and the clock is just stunning to look at. Although it's very visual, it is too quiet for me, so I decided to add an extra feature like sound. And because I can, why not also add a ticker or two, a web interface, and the possibility to use it without Wi-Fi access. See you back at the office. Don't be late. You can program the clock to play sounds every now and then, like every minute, every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, and so on. You can use MP3 files or WAV files. This way, it operates more like a normal clock. I also programmed it to play a sound whenever I have a coffee break or a lunch break, or even at the end of my working day. A cup of coffee? That way, it becomes an asset at the work floor. Let me show you the electronics behind this bright timepiece. I did my design in Easy Ada. It's a free uh, software that you can use for your PCB designs. This is the schematic. We start with the power supply. This is the power in, uh, basically 12 volts, 4 amps, and uh, of course a fuse and two diodes to uh, have a little circuit protection, a stabilizer, a capacitor, and a regulator. The regulator gives out 5 volt DC, which is called the VCC. And again, it's stabilized by a capacitor. Then this is the microcontroller. It's an ESP32. Uh, I use a DevKit 1. Of course, there is an interface for your display, the Hub 75. You can just connect the flat cable and the power supply, of course. Uh, we have an amplifier board, which is also a OEM product. And there's a socket for a micro SD card. And basically, that's your whole circuit. Of course, we have some spare uh, connections in case we need them in the future. And I put all of that in a nice uh, PCB design that I will show you now. This is basically the PCB. It's a two-layer board. And this is your connector for the display. There's a small capacitor here that was needed uh, to compensate noise on the latency pin. Of the display but I will spare you the details it's quite boring instead let's move on to the 3d view what you see here is the board with all its component except the dev kit 1 ESP32 board and the audio board and some connectors simply because they were not in the library now the board was ready and I had to send it to my sponsors to have it produced So I had my boards produced by PCBWay, a PCB manufacturer that can produce boards from 2 up to 14 layers. They also make flexible and aluminum PCBs. Best of all, they have an assembly service enabling them to produce turnkey products. You design, they build and deliver. Ordering a board is easy. Go to the website and fill out the form. Choose your options and upload your design and they will start producing. A few days later, you will receive quality boards at your doorstep, ready for you to be used in your great design. PCB way, the way to go. First, we have the main program, which contains all the functions and some unimportant variables.
The second file is an index.h file, which basically is an HTML file encoded into a variable, and it will be used by the web server. The third file is a logo to show my electronic engineer logo on boot up. And there is the settings uh, file, which includes all the major settings for you to change, although some of those can also be changed through the web server when the clock is live. Most important, it also contains the references to the audio files. You can use MP3 and WAV files, um, and all the names are here. If you want to use your own files, you need to change those names and adjust it accordingly, or just uh, use the same name convention for your own files. It's important uh, to look at the settings, silent from and silent until. Between those times, between those hours, the clock will be silent, for example, when you're sleeping. Beep every minute can be turned on and off. Uh, it will give a sound every minute or not. And of course, there is the 12-hour format, which uh, needs a bit more fine-tuning in regards to layout, but that's up to you. Uh, and of course, we have the force refresh, which will uh, change every digit every time the time change, or it will just change the last digit. And the tickle length can be changed here. Although, if you change the tickle length here, uh, remember to also change uh, the JSON length uh, in the other file, which is right here. Let me show you. Here, JSON string. And you need to um, change the length of the string, which is set to 800. And if you change your tickle length to a different one times two, because you have two tickers, you also need to adjust that accordingly. If you're sure that all libraries are installed correctly, you can uh, compile it, or you can just briefly compile it and upload it and see what happens. And if all is well, then your uh, ESP will be programmed. However, there is a second option. For those of you who don't have a compiler or don't want to install it or go to the hassle of uh, compiling it, you can use the web installer. Although you need to use uh, Chrome or Edge, uh, go to the link that is in the description, hook up your ESP, and just press install. And I will download my pre-compiled version of the clock to your uh, ESP. You can still change some of the settings in the, in the web server like the display type. Um, maybe I will um, add more settings to that later. So now we're looking at the interface of the web server. And in here, you can change a lot of settings. You can change the brightness. If you click it, you see the brightness of the clock change. You can change the volume uh, of the audio. You can change the animation delay, which is the speed in which the Tetris blocks fall down. You can cha change the top speed and the bottom speed of the tickers, the text tickers. And of course, you can change the text of the tickers. You can also change your display. You can select whatever display you are using, up to two panels at this time. Uh, the chipset of, you can change, and then you press the button below, and it will reboot. The different buttons here will play different sounds. If you press them, then the predefined WAV files will be played. If you want to build your own clock, take a look at my step-by-step -step tutorial at Instructables. It shows you exactly how to build your own clock. And if you do so, don't forget to show it off at the end. I love to see what you have built. If you like this video, please subscribe and press like. And I hope to see you next time.